Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And I'm joining us all as my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And we'll be continuing our dive into the Stephen King adapted filmography. And today we got a heavy hitter from 1985. We're going to be looking at the film Cat's Eye. And this film is directed by Louis Teague. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the dramatic pause. Yes. It was Well, team. my notes. I, I forgot to bring my notes up because I had to restart the computer. No, it. But I, 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 I came off the memory. I'm glad it didn't film me right there. But um, this tale follows a cat. Um, it's kind of an interesting story. The synopsis is a little um, you know, shallow, so I'm going to explain it. Uh, we, it's, it's pretty much an anthology, mm-hmm. but, but it's... But it's kind of not because these stories are connected by our central character. We're following this cat as it makes his journey. And it plays a major role in each of these three stories. So, in effect, man, the cat is our protagonist, you know, yes. in a way. You know, and the, the watcher, the, 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 the thing that we're experiencing the story through. So, it follows um, one story is about a um, smoker's clinic to get people from quit to smoking. And another one is about a... Um, a group of guys who are into um, just gambling and, and wagers, but not just sports betting and stuff like that. It's, it's more about wagers of life. And then there's some interesting dynamics going on with that. And then finally, we get a, um, a little girl um, played by Drew Barrymore, by the way, who is being visited at night and, um, you know, unbeknownst to her by a little demon that's essentially trying to um, steal her life essence, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's get to the cast and we'll break it down. Um, so this film stars um, Drew Barrymore, um, young Drew Barrymore. I think this was around E.T. time. Um, shortly after. Okay. Um, and James Woods finally plays a role where I didn't just hate him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. He, was, he was actually he was a likable guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we also get um, Alan King, Robert Hayes, Court Miller, uh, Kenneth McMillan. Uh, he was great in this. Uh, yeah, James Naughton, Candy Clark, uh, Tony Monafo, James Rephorn, Mike Starr, Charles Dutton. He even pops up. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mary D'Arcy. I think she was in something else of his uh, another Stephen King film of uh, Russell Horton, Shelley Birch, uh, Patricia Kalebner. Uh, we even get uh, Christopher Walken. But um, you know, it's funny because Christopher Walken actually didn't act in this, but there's a scene in uh, the James Wood, uh, the James Wood part of this uh, mm-hmm. this this movie where he's watching Dead Zone, which Christopher Walken was. That's where he gets the credit. Yeah, that's where he gets another, the credit. Yes. Another Stephen King film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert G. Hayes. Kenneth McMillan and so and so. I think that's enough for the cast. <laughs> but uh, what do you like about this film, man? For starters, I love the beginning. Um, you know, and this is this is a testament to our director uh, Louis Teague because in the beginning we see our cat just starting and he's he's kind of just you know running, roaming, roaming around in the streets and. He crosses paths with Cujo. Mm-hmm. Cujo's chasing him through, and then he almost gets ran over by Christine. That was the craziest part to me because um, I think a lot of the other films are loosely connected, the Castle Rock location, and they're all in Maine. Yeah. But this was a blatant reference of, and it's Cujo and because he's nasty and it dirty. Was Cujo, like Cujo. It was cute, Christine, mm-hmm. and it was a blatant reference because Cujo and Christine were both directed by Louis T mm-hmm. in 1983. Yeah, yeah. So, I thought that was funny. So that, was, that was really cool. And that was something I never caught until all these years later. Last yeah. time I watched this film, was I was probably in um, middle school. So seeing that, that was cool. Catching that, actually yeah, being and, aware enough to, you know. And since they did that, those of us that, you know, do appreciate these, you know, these, these, these Stephen King film adaptations of these stories, it instantly pulls you in. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like, okay, well, where's this film going to go? And the cool thing about this is that our first two stories are actually um, pulled out of a, a Stephen King um, short story uh, compilation book that came out in, I want to say, 78 called Night Shift. Mm-hmm. And the, the first one, Quitters, Inc., the second one, The Ledge. But then when you look at this list, I mean, there's so many, so many short stories in this uh, in this book that have been turned into films, but we'll we'll save that for, uh, for another day. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know the way this this thing starts, and you know one thing that I was I was looking into is that they said uh, director Louis T was a little throw thrown off because he actually had a segment where he wanted to kind of deep dive into the origin of the cat a little bit mm-hmm. to kind of you know make the connection stick a little harder. Um, 
But then uh, the powers that be actually told him that that would be cheesy and tacky as if, you know, having a cat fight a troll in the end. Yeah, there's a lot going on already, you know what I'm saying? I I, I probably could have, you know, uh, lived with that. But also, for what it is, I don't think you needed more, man. It's one of them things where we're just a fly on the wall, man. It's kind of interesting, too, because I feel like this cat, if you believe in the nine lives theory, this cat pretty much went through most of them by the end of this thing. Yeah. There's a lot going on, dude. Uh, it's cool. But uh, one of the things I do like is is the stories themselves, man. Like, the quit and smoking thing is crazy because I love the idea of this, that it's so extreme. It's like the last ditch effort. Like, forget your little um, nicotine gum or your cold turkey. It's like, this is a hardcore thing. And it is weird. There's some ambiguity because it kind of... Um, hitting it there, government funded operation and, and really not much oversight and, and it's it. but it's hardcore. Like like they're in your house. They they got people watching you. Just, and and, there, and and there's consequences when you do um smoke, you know? Yes. Dude, they're getting you like that Will Smith movie, Enemy of the State. Mm-hmm. My man my what if my, my man told James Wood now for starters, James Wood he, he was filling out the thing and it was, it's tripped out because he's in the waiting room and you see this dude across the uh, you know across the room. He's just crying he's mm-hmm. like, and James Woods is looking like what the hell? And then his wife comes out and just starts beating up on him like mm-hmm. MF, you know, I promise you. You know, and um but you never really see him like sign a contract and instantly he's like, man, bump this, I'm mm-hmm. out. And the dude pulls him in. And um, it's tripped out because it's almost like all you need to do is show up. Once you show up, you're already on board. And then my man says, my man says what are you saying? He's like, um, well, like, you're all not of even us, allowed to like, quit the, 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 the quitting spot. Yeah, and he was, like, he was like, you know, I want you to know, you know, you can't smoke. It, like, cause he pretty, in essence, he, he, this is where we get our first interaction with the cat in the in the first story, and they have the cat in this um, this room. It looks like a like a big grate, and he's like shocking the well the floor is is mm-hmm. pretty much electrocuted. Yeah. And he's shocking the cat, which they also said they weren't really shocking the cat. There was somebody underneath the grate with like an air pressurized gun, so mm-hmm. it's, it's making that's why jump. the cat was jumping. But, it's just uh, yeah, with the sparks, it, it looks you it know, looks there's sparks yes. going on. I don't and, know if they used a little <laughs> throw like a little pyro underneath. Yeah. Just to, and my, my <laughs> man tells me he's like, yeah, this time we just showing you. Uh, you know what this room does next time you know if you ever smoke you're gonna put your wife in there mm-hmm. <laughs> or your kids in there and you know make you think twice about smoking and um james woods is like man this is this is hardcore and what, what my man said he was like he was like you might not see us all the time or all, all, all the time like so we're watching pretty much in essence we're watching all the time, but you ain't gonna you ain't gonna know where it's coming from, who's watching. Uh, I can't remember the phrase, so I'm not gonna try and quote it because that's just gonna make me look foolish. But as the story goes through, it's like you see. I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, quitting cigarettes is is a hard thing, but I mean, I, to take it to this links, I mean. The, the, there's one part where he wakes up in the middle of the night, bro, and he's mm-hmm. like, he's he's fiending, he's jonesing. Yeah. I mean, this is this is like day one, and my man, he finds a little cigarette. Next thing you know, he's at his desk, he's about to spark up, and he hears something in the closet. He's like, the hell? goes in there, and there's just rain boots in the closet. Mm-hmm. He knows somebody's in there. He's like, oh, I didn't smoke it. I didn't smoke it. Don't hurt my wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm looking at that like, bro. And then so the next day, he comes in, he comes and checks the closet and the boots ain't there. Uh, <laughs> and, then, you know, and then you see my man, like there's this dude, he's jogging around his house in loafers, bro. Like you hear him. And then he just, he ru- runs to the end of the house, turns around, runs right back. So, I mean, you get that sense like, damn, they are watching. And I thought it was really cool too that throughout this whole film, they play um, they play the Sting song. Uh, what is it? Um, I'll be, or Every Breath You Take. And there's a part where he's like, I'll be watching you. Except the funny thing is, is that in, when this film came out, they didn't have the funding to pay that Sting money. Mm-hmm. So they had to get, they had to, they paid for the cover. It's not yeah. actually the police. Yeah, it's, it's just, not, it's it's just not, sound a little wonky, man. It's just not Sting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird how that's figured out because some songs you would think that would cost a lot of money don't and ones that you think aren't that valuable to put in a film they're going to cost you an arm and a leg so it's yeah. interesting that they you know did it that way but um, I think for me one of the craziest parts of this segment is the 
the moment when he's in that party and he's really being tempted, <laughs> all he sees is smoking. It's one of the greatest scenes in this movie because the, first of all, it's just everyone smoking, everyone yeah. in the party, and it's and it's and they're all smoking inside. So it kind of really does make the habit look so disgusting. Everyone you see has a cigarette and they're just blowing obnoxious amounts of smoke. There's, there's life size cigarette packs walking around. <laughs> like, like, hey, you know you want to do it. Like, it's, 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 everywhere he looks, it's just smoke. And it's so it's so funny to me that scene because it's because it's so exaggerated. The amount of just yeah, it, it's great, man. I, I definitely appreciate this segment. I mean, you know, eventually they. Put his wife in there with the cat, which explains the the, the, the the when he first goes into the office. That woman, how she her reaction coming out. So yeah. so so, but but it's it's wild, man. It's an interesting, uh, you know, segment. I mean, eventually, you know, he he trials. He, he kind of kind of exposes these guys and gets them up under their, their thumb. And then, yeah, well, the only way to do that is to quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And there is there is a cool little um, situation that happens at the end. You know what I'm saying? But if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about when they're all sitting at the table and mm -hmm. toasting and stuff. But if you haven't seen it, watch it. You'll notice it. It's it's, it's pretty cool. It brings everything in in perspective that this this uh, this Quitters Inc. company is yeah. not playing no games. Yes, yeah. but the next segment, I think it's probably the least connected one. It just so happens that the cat is moving through. It's not like. In the first one, where the cat was being tortured to get yeah. out of quit smoking, so so eventually, we, like I said, we meet these gamblers, and and, and it's funny because they look like they're out all night on the time, and they look kind of like some. I think the the big guy, he's like some crime boss kind of, you know, some, yes. some you know connected like that to the streets. But but they're coming out, they're night on the time, they're a little tipsy, whatever. They see this cat, and they're trying. That's the first bet. It's like yeah. They're trying to call the cat across the street. It's like, yeah, Betty, Betty's going to get hit. Betty won't. Betty won't. my man's on trading places. Don't do. They're just gambling. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 it's, and, and this one isn't, I mean, it's kind of is messed up because they're calling the cat. Like, what if he dies because you called him over? And But it's, it's interesting, man. So so it, 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 it eventually escalates. But then you also find out that my man's dude has been has, having an affair. You know what I'm saying? That was and, a different guy. That, for real, yeah, that the, dude, dude, the dude he was gambling with, because you notice at the end, like the cat makes it across the street, and oh, there, there's no payout. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is, is that this other dude, he's like a, a, you know, used to be a professional tennis player, kind of mm -hmm. washed up in a sense, but he's having an affair with um, the main dude's wife. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, he ends up, like, like set, like it shows the tennis player and the wife, and you're like, yo, just go get on this bus. I'm gonna take care of this. I'm gonna go talk to him. And she's like, you just don't understand the kind of man he is. Mm -hmm. So he goes to check him out, and and instantly, like my man is is ten steps ahead. Like it's not just that he's a you know absurd gambler and that he's willing he's got, to risk he's it all. He's really observant. He knows what's going on. Around what's going on, and he's on a power trip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so the, what he, what he ends up doing is he puts the dude in a position um, to you know if you make a choice. It's like we did X Y Z to your car. We can you can take this route, mm -hmm. or what I'll do is I'll make you a bet. You can go ahead, and and he has this like he lives on this high rise. Yeah, I love there's that. this little yeah. like I mean I mean the ledge must be that big, mm -hmm. bro. And he he's like you know if you can you know get on this ledge and scale across from, the whole you know, building, the come back to the balcony, <laughs> then you know not only will I give you some bread. I'll give you this like a hundred racks. Mm -hmm. He was like, and you can you can walk away. I'll, I'll, whatever I did to your car, whatever you know, legal issues, wash that away, and you get my wife. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, are you an honest better? It's like, bro, <laughs> this is. Uh, I mean, you've been back with him for, for months now. No, this dude got a relationship. Oh, this dude's not the guy that bets. He's yeah, 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 yeah. They're not betting together. So, they're not hanging out. With that part. <laughs> But, but but it's like but this part it, it kills me because like I remember seeing this part as a kid and it was just so suspenseful, so oh. crazy. Oh it's just God. so because because he's walking and it's funny because he he's getting to a point where he's getting comfortable. 
But yeah. then all of a sudden, all these random things pop up. Well, there, the dude keeps messing things. with him. Yeah, that part too. But that then, was messed up. But then there's things like once he gets a, away from dude's reins, he's still, you know, he's got to step around poles, maybe a pipe or something. And, and then the pigeon. And then the oh, pigeon. Evil pigeon. He starts eating his ankle, dog. <laughs> he just starts pecking at his ankle. And, like, Yo, and then he's you like, see, like, the, the blood coming through the sock. Yeah. Like, what what did he have on that sock that that pigeon wanted? Like, I is he? No, man. They, they did a good job of making that because it worked, but. But the, the funny part of it is like like it it it, 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 it it's effective in that suspense thing because yes. you know, like I said that pigeon comes out of nowhere you're like all right he's good he's got out of the range of the guy the guy can't see him so he can get around on his own but then yo know, that just <laughs> just makes you think how many other people had to walk that ledge because that that pigeon you're like he's like man we do this on Friday nights so I come and I eat ankles he got too close to his nest <laughs> I didn't see no nest bro I mean, who knows maybe he just got territorial just for whatever reason yeah, man. That's his ledge, man. It, it was it was crazy. But it's man. and it's and it's wild because Maybe the picture had the shiny. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, like like you said, it's just it's so tripped out because then this this dude, you can tell just how evil he is because every you know every chance this this guy he like he I mean there are there are points where like I've watched this thing and I'm like man I'd have fell like the yeah. one part where he like falls back like my balance ain't that good nah, nah, and I got big feet he so got on loafers off. he got on slides loafers wood yeah. hardwood bottoms of his slip concrete like what? man and there's nothing to hold on to you're no, like holding on to like the crap <laughs> just kind of like shimmying across yeah. and, and you know another thing is for this movie to be so you know what did what it come out 80, 85 85 the visuals like this you watch this segment it can give you vertigo mm -hmm. it will make you feel woozy at times it's very intense and you know the like the way it's the way it's shot and, and, and all that stuff it just you feel like you're out on that ledge with mm -hmm. that dude man and like you said all these all these little things that that just keep happening you know, you can't help but to root for him. Yeah, it's like, just definitely effective. My man, across. Yeah. the one hole in the sock looked like a nice dime, and the pigeon yeah. was working on making another penny on, on the other hole. You know, yes, yeah. he was, was clacking the ankles. I would have kicked him about. Yo, if I made it to where he made it, the little breezeway, boy, I would have choke slammed this pigeon. What? Did he? Hold up. I got it. I forgot. Nah, he did. No, oh. no, no. Our pigeon comes back. Drop our pigeon comes out. back. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah, yeah, look, at a later time. He just kicked the shit yeah. out. He just kicked the shit out. Yeah, he did. Bird. Yeah, feathers. Yeah. But, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, but it's, it's really cool because oh. this is also. Oh, man, still there. Yeah, he starts yeah. hitting with the hoes. Like, come on, man. Yeah. But, but this is, you know, one thing that's really cool about this. Um, about this segment is it's like you know what goes around comes around you know what mm -hmm. i mean and i think stephen king in in various forms in in a lot of these adaptations and a lot of these novels he does a good job at that like you know what i'm saying you do on the others man yeah. it, i mean it, it works man i love it eventually he makes it through and though the wildest part to me is like uh <laughs> it's like yeah gives him his money shit he's like here's my wife and then uh, like, hey, in the bag. bag and i'm like yo this guy is a piece of Straight doo doo trash, and was still trying to get get his hitman to take him out. Mm -hmm. It's just my man, you know, he had he had that fight in him. You know, he was like, man, I walk across the ledge, my mm -hmm. ankles is bleeding. I ain't worried about no mobster with a silencer, and I'm not worried about you. <laughs> so I mean, it, 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 it's a cool segment, man. I, like it's definitely. I mean, I kind of like all the segments for real, man. Like this is one of the ones where I really don't find no weakness in any of the stories you know no. some might be better than others but i think they're all good uh, it's probably one of his better adaptations man but yes. um and you know one more thing and the thing that connects the cat uh, i forgot to mention you know he picks up you take the gangster takes the cat home after yes. the first bet and because he makes yes. it across the street and the cat's just there really it's not you know and, and then uh, once it comes to inclusion you know the, the you know the cat just rolls out on yeah. the next adventure but you know one thing i think that works for this as an anthology is because you know as we moved into the later years anthology films would give us shorter stories and, mm -hmm. and more of them like you know like yeah. four or five where this one the clock's in at a solid three, three. Rule of three. and and it's a it, it what is it an hour and a half film so that's a yeah. solid half an hour so it's just pretty much like watching a mini series man so they they gave enough time to for you know story development character development and you know to, to, to kind of make everything come full circle yeah. as a whole yeah. so we got like 13 minutes man so let's um go into this next um <laughs> Look, segment, man, which is probably my overall favorite, man. Yep. So, officially, our Tomcat 
makes it to the countryside some kind of way. He's just wandering, man. He, he was on the train. He out the yeah, train. You know, he's got hobo life, hopping yeah. on the train. Hopping on the train. Ends up in a small town, runs up uh, on his family. And, uh, and, it, and it's interesting because I forgot to mention, in the very first beginning of this film, we meet the cat. Cat's walking through the city and looks into the window of the store and at a mannequin. And suddenly the mannequin's face turned to Drew Barrymore's face. It's like, help me. I need help. Um, it's trying to get, like, which well, is crazy to me. You know, she actually, she played a small role in the first story and the third. I mean, she played a major role in, in the third story. Mm -hmm. We see the, the face, but uh, actually she was also um, James Woods' daughter. Mm. She played the role. Of, they just switched her hair up, put the glasses on. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even know that. But so eventually he makes it to this house, this family is like a old farmhouse property kind of thing, you know. And um, essentially, man, we um, the, the 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 mom is cool. Dad is like, man, we don't want this damn cat in here, this darn cat. So so I, I no I like other way around. Like, mom oh, thinks that the cat is okay, gonna eat bad. her bird. <laughs> yeah, 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 my bad. <laughs> but, but 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 the funny part is, um. I think she names the cat General, right? General, yeah, which yes. is wild. But and the but, bird's name was Polly. Yeah. You know, figure. <laughs> so, but but yeah, the mom's worried about the bird and all that. But then we come to find out that every night, um, you know, she's getting visited by this little demon, is essentially um, sucking away a bit of her life, life force, force, man. <laughs> like, you know, that that was so crazy. I love this. The cool thing about this is that when we, though, I love how this one starts because, you know, as we see our cat making his way to go find her, we also get introduced to the troll. We just don't know what he looks like. Yeah. We get these like this 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 POV style, and you see him creeping through the woods and, and snarling. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the funny thing is. Like, I love the troll. Yeah. Like, I mean, he he is a he is a bad little warrior, man. Like, I he, love the way this is shot, man, because they're doing some really good matte um, filmmaking, where, where, where basically you're, you're you're using layers of film and putting them on top of each other. Like, yes. like the troll is being filmed by himself somewhere, and then they're superimposing it on images of her. Like, like that part where he leans over the bed sheet, that's like a giant bed sheet that they built. Yes. And they filmed the troll doing that, and then they layered it on the, the, the other video of her just, you know. And this had sleep. to be like techniques that they used in later films, like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or something. Mm -hmm. like I mean, that. it's an old technique. It just yeah. looked pretty clean here. Like, <laughs> even right here, walking, looking at him, walking, creep up to the, to, yeah. to the edge. That looked really but good still. Like, even though this was 85. His, his look, he yeah. looks, he looks creepy, but also, Kind of looks like he'd be fun to, to, to have, like to hang out with. Like, I'd hang I out with a little know, dude. Bro. He's got the little jester head. He, 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 he. I mean, I wouldn't fall asleep around him. He tried to, try to eat my Somebody trying to dude. touch you after a dice dude, game. I love the part. So, so when, he, when him and the cat start battling, you know, and the first time he bests his general mm -hmm. and he stabs him, and then he gets his knife back, and then before he goes in his little hole, he's like, ah! Like he's such a little warrior. <laughs> it's just clearly a man in the suit. Well, it is with, with some animatronics on the face. Like it's effective. It's really well done. Dude. And you know the cool thing about this is like the voice. Like they do these little voices. Like you hear him laughing and yeah. and he was actually voiced over by Vel uh, Frank Welker, who's also the voice of Kermit the Frog. Oh my and god! When he so did so the Henson people work on this? Yes, or? he he was the voice of Kermit, Skeeter, and Beaker, dog. Yeah. And and it's funny because. I think they, they, they pay testament to that because when the, the little troll is like, he grabs those balloons and he's like, yeah. those are Muppet balloons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then another thing I love about the troll is, you know, every cool villain has a theme song and he has his too. Because when he's up to his troll shenanigans, dog, it's like, the, 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 the song you is know, all like I was sinister. Me, remember, I remember <laughs> watching this as a kid because it's got like three fingers and then the way he would just like pitch the, the like it was perfect fit to, 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 to pitch her nostrils for you. Yeah. Which force her to breathe out of her mouth and then I think that's when he started drawing in the life her, her air. Because I mean, that, that's one of the old wives tales. Like if you keep a cat in the house, it'll drain your life you know, like, sunny, yeah, so you're like, yeah, yeah. drain your air or something. And, and, and but, but, but in this film, it's not the cat, it's the, the, troll. the troll, but the cat's getting blamed for it. Yeah, yeah I love it, man. I it's love just, it. And then, I mean, like, I love it's just this is like, you know, another just, just awesome, awesome you know, viewing of good versus evil. And then I mean. it gets a little goofy, though. It I love when um, she wakes up and then he's fighting the cat of uh, the cat's of uh, general's fighting the troll. He's like, get him, general, get him, general. And then, then general puts him on the record. 
that is the way for all to start the start. The parents are trying to get into the door. door. They can't. They can't open yeah, the door because because the, the troll yeah, is the troll is that, a beast yeah, at what he does. Knock that damn door down. 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 She yeah. she had he he put the, the door jam in there. He's yeah. there kicking I'm it. kicking that thing. Hey dog, I mean I'm football tackling the door. Yeah, what's coming off, bro? I mean, hey man, dude, this is back in the day. This is when doors were made of real wood, not condensed wood. I don't know, man. They just going flying, bro. I'm gonna go get something. Yeah, man. Then the general starts DJing and everything, dude. It's so it's so cool, man. Yeah, what's up to the yes, It's like speeding yeah, up. Yeah. And it's funny because that's yet yeah. another another uh, song playing of of, <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's, it's that song again. That every breath you take, like yeah. they they actually they, they they break that song down <laughs> in, in ways yeah. because like. In the first, in the first segment is we, you know we are watching you blah blah blah. But then in the last one they keep talking about the every breath you take. So it's cool how they use that song to like coincide with the story that's being told at the time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Even though it wasn't Sting. Mm -hmm. Nah, that, that was cool, man. I mean, overall, man, for what this thing is, I definitely this is one of my favorite um Stephen King adaptations. I enjoyed this film. And it's cool just seeing it. Like I said, it's been years, man, since I've yes. seen, seen it. And it holds up, man. Like, I'm entertained by uh, the other segments. And the crazy thing is, I, I remember being younger. The only one I, that really got me was the um, the um, the uh, the gambling and the troll. But, but now yeah. seeing it now, the smoking thing is yes. dope as hell, too, yes. man. That, yes. This is a really... A really great movie, man. Dude, it's, it's, it's funny that you can, you, you're pretty much, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm riding with you in parallel with everything you're saying. This, this film is a testament of our age. You know, we mm -hmm. tell y'all how old we are. This film is, <laughs> is letting you know because the smoker one overlooked me as well. But um, that's mm -hmm. because, you know, when at the age when I saw this, yeah, I, I wasn't understand. Why am I smoking no cigarettes? Wow. But somebody could put me out on the, uh, somebody could put me out on the balcony and make me walk around the house and, you know, all yeah. monsters were real at that point yeah. in my life. But yes, this, this one, you know, I love this film because it is a blast from the past. This one, it brings me back to childhood. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of like all the other stuff that I was watching around that time that were just, you know, kind of done in the same likeness. I mean, you, you know, we, a lot of films, they, they were more magical, more majestic in, in a sense. And this film, and it embodies that in, in so many ways. And it's also, it's being told by the adventures of a cat, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It, 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 that's that's just it's very unique in its in its own way. And, um, yes, I I I I stand by this film. I, it would be on my my top five Stephen King adaptation list as well, just mm -hmm. because of the. I mean, dude, I've, I've watched this now three times this week just to get ready for this show, <laughs> and it just gives me this sense of joy. And one of the times I, I watched it with my daughter, and she was like, "Yo, this movie's so awesome!" And just the music, the scores mm -hmm. are great. And then, I mean, not for nothing. Testament to the 80s because we're seeing the credits start rolling. You get the most awesomest 80s song ever in life named Cat's Eye, just like the, <laughs> the story. <laughs> and it's sung by Ray Stevens. Oh, and it's just so, man. so 80s, you know, and I just, I'm, and I'm all about it, man. This is, this is, this was, this was fun. I enjoyed this from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, as we can wrap this up, man, this has been another episode of Classic of Cinematics, man. And check this film out if you haven't seen it. Um, if you haven't, go watch it again, man. That's yes. really cool, man. Uh, but yeah, this is Monkey. You catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Follow Classics of Cinematics at Classics of Cinematics on um, Instagram. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel, man. You made it this far. Shoot, give us something back for all this work we're doing for y'all. Right. For the free, free. For the what? <laughs> at least one of these guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on, uh, on Instagram at Bobby Blockbuster 118. Yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <laughs>